This video covers how to find the equation of a sphere. So as you can see in this diagram, we have the three dimensional Cartesian plane um, with our X, Y and Z axes and a plane sitting there where we have the center of the sphere as X1, Y1, Z1. And then we have a point P on the sphere given by X, Y, Z. Now, what's important is to note that no matter where we go on this sphere, the distance from the center to a point on the sphere will be the radius. Okay, so any point that we go, we will get the radius. Okay, so what we can do is we can consider the radius to be a vector between the center and the point P on the sphere. So the vector would be given by the difference between the coordinates. So we've got x minus x1, y minus y1, z minus z1. And R would be the magnitude of that vector AP. So that means our R squared is going to be X minus X1 all squared plus Y minus Y1 all squared plus Z minus Z1 all squared. Um, also note that the midpoint of a line segment, just like what we did in two dimensions, which was X1 plus X2 divided by 2, Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2, we would just add that third dimension Z1 plus Z2 divided by 2. So let's do some examples. Firstly, determine the Cartesian equation of a sphere with center 4, negative 1, 2 and radius 6 units. So our r squared is going to be 6 squared, which is 36. So we have 36 equals x minus 4 or squared plus y minus minus 1 is y plus 1 or squared plus z minus 2 or squared. So we're just putting each of those points in our equation. Go the other way, determine the centre and radius of a sphere with Cartesian equation as follows. So R squared is 4, so my R has to be 2. We're only using the positive. And then we read the coordinates as being the opposite. So negative 1, 3, negative 2. So centre is negative 1, 3, negative 2. And radius is two units. Next, determine the Cartesian equation of a sphere that has A and B as the endpoints of the diameter. So that if that's the diameter, we need the midpoint, which would be the center. So center would be midpoint of AB. So the centre is going to be just the addition of the corresponding coordinates. So we've got 6 take 2 divided by 2, 12 plus 4 divided by 2, and 11 take 1 divided by 2. 6 take 2 is 4, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 12 plus 4 is 16, divided by 2 is 8. 11 take 1 is 10, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, for the radius, we have two options. One, distance between the endpoints. So, the magnitude of AB, and then we'd have to divide that by 2 because a, the distance from AB is our diameter. Um, two, we could do the distance from the centre to one of the endpoints.
Now, personally, I go the first option because what if I accidentally got my center incorrect? So my radius is going to be equal to negative 2 take 6 all squared plus 4 take 12 all squared plus negative 1 take 11 all squared. And that's all going to be divided by 2. So that's going to be negative 2 take 6 is negative 8, negative 8 squared is 64, 4 take 12 is negative 8, negative 8 squared is 64, negative 1 take 11 is negative 12, negative 12 squared is 144 divided by 2. So that's the square root of 272 divided by 2. Now in my equation I need r squared so that's going to be the square root of 272 all over 2 all squared which will be 272 over 4 which is 68 units. So finally equation of the sphere is going to be 68 equals x take 2 all squared plus y take 8 all squared plus z take 5 all squared. So that's just using our center and our r squared. One more example, determine the center and radius of the sphere with the Cartesian equation as follows. So the key here is we're going to need to complete the square in each of the x, y, and z components. So let's separate. We've got x squared minus 12x. We've got y squared plus 4y, and we have z squared plus 8z, and this plus 20 we're going to take to the other side. So x squared minus 12x, y squared plus 4y, z squared plus 8z, and then that would equal negative 20. So to complete the square, firstly, let's start with our negative 12. We would go plus negative 12 divided by 2 or squared, just like what we would normally do when completing the square. Now, because we've done that on the left-hand side, I need to do the same thing and add that on my right-hand side. Moving along, we have plus 4, so we're going to go plus 4 over 2, all squared, and again, I need to put that on the other side. Finally, we have our positive 8, so we're going to go plus 8 over 2, all squared. Do the same to the other side to maintain the balance. So completing the square for our x, we're going to have x take negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 6, all squared. Move along. For y, we're going to have y, 4 divided by 2 is 2, all squared. And then finally, for our z, we have z plus 8 divided by 2 is 4, all squared. Put in our pluses in between. And then on our right side, we have negative 20. Negative 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. So our equation, x take 6 all squared plus y plus 2 all squared plus z plus 4 all squared equals negative 20 plus 36 is 16. 16 plus 4 is 20. 20 plus 16 is 36. So that means our center is 6, negative 2, negative 4, and our radius is a square root of 36, which is 6 units.